Hello, I'm Monte Beatham. This is Once a Warrior. My guest in the studio today played 145 times for the club, and in my opinion, probably the most complete player to put on the Warriors jumper. Jerome Ropotti, uh, great to see you, man. Thanks for having me, Monty. How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. And what's keeping you busy? Uh, I work for the uh, for the council now, the mighty Auckland Council, as a building inspector. So there's a lot of time uh, there. Um, I've got uh, a fair few kids. I've got six kids. Me and my wife, uh, we're heavily involved in the church, so um, yeah, we're, we're pretty busy. You mentioned six kids. How much do they understand that dad was a carver and for the New Zealand Warriors <laughs> side that everyone's uh, on the bandwagon with right now? Well, it, look, they don't, I, uh, apart from my son and my daughter who were, you know, alive at the time that I played and they were very young, they were just babies. Uh, the rest of the kids don't know. And to be honest, Mont, I don't show that side of me. Yeah. Um, Humble man. You know, when you talk about the Warriors and you talk about being a professional athlete, yeah. there's a bubble that's contained in that. Um, it's different to the real world. And so I try to divorce myself from being an athlete to being a father. And uh, I'm just uh, a person that loves them and provides for them and teaches them every aspect of life. Now, Jay, I know you're a very humble man, so when I make that statement about you being the most complete footballer in my mind uh, through the Warriors' history, uh, why do you think you were such a, a good student and you possess the, the ability as well? Um, I guess, you know, growing up in, a, in an island family, you just do as you're told, you know, just anything that if, if somebody asks you to do something, you just do it. And I guess when I came into the Warriors, uh, that was just it. Daniel Anderson asked me to play 5-8. I played it. I played a little bit of it, um, actually a majority of it back in um, my junior days, um, rugby league uh, for Marist. Um, and, you know, if you look at the position, it translates into fullback. And Daniel Anderson had me playing fullback. So those two positions, I guess, if you can do everything there, you pretty much can play in the outside backs. Well, Jerome, you could play in pretty much in any position. And let's go back and remind the people of how good you were. Road party. So when you watch that, uh, there wasn't a lot you couldn't do. Uh, what memories come to mind when you see you carving up in that jumper, man? Yeah, uh, oof, carving up, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, look, uh, the thing with the Warriors is um, it's been a hometown. And so, you know, running out onto Mount Smart Stadium was, you know, in front of family and friends. I think, uh, you know, that's probably the highest uh, form of motivation you could have. You know, I've never played for any other club but it just seems like playing for the Warriors, playing for a hometown was, um, you know, just a way that you could manifest how much you, you know, love being a home kid. Um, but it wasn't all roses at first. Talk to me about that. No, it was, I was 16, I think. Um, Daniel Anderson had just uh, um, created a development site uh, for the Warriors. The ages ranged from 16 to 24, I think it was. Mm. So I was training with 24-year-olds. Wow. Man, that's daunting. Yes. You know, like it's... It, you you do pad work and you end up looking at the sky most of the time. You know? <laughs> Turning up to development was, man, I was scared every single session. I just did as I, as I was told by my father to um, to hang in there. Uh, got dropped uh, about 12 months later uh, because, and I think simply because I was too timid. Mm. I wasn't um, I wasn't aggressive enough. Um, and rightfully so. So how did you get that, that second chance at the club then? So I went to St Paul's College, which is a well-known rugby league school. We had won the New Zealand Secondary Schools Championship. Mm. We got invited to the Australian Secondary Schools competition. Uh, it was called the Nutrigain Cup at the time. We got injected into the last 32 schools. Uh, we managed to beat two of their schools. 
I was captain of the side and Daniel Anderson probably gave me a chance. You signed up uh, for the pre-season in 2003, so you're coming into this great environment. What do you remember of being in that environment? You know, when I came in, you, you were there. Obviously, you guys had just gone to the grand final, so I had a lot of good teachers that I could watch on a daily basis, um, train the professional ethic that I could, um, you know, observe. When you're growing up in grassroots rugby league, you know, as a Kiwi boy, Fundamentals aren't really the, the best things, right? Mm. And so mm. I remember one training session, I just kept dropping the ball. I don't know if you can remember. I, the reason why I dropped the ball was Stacy's passes were so pinpoint. Yes. It was unbelievable just standing there getting a pass from Stacy. And I, I remember I dropped maybe two or three. Mm. That could have led to tries. It was just a training session. And then I remember you and Tony Kemp had some very nice words for me oh, well. after that one. And Mott, I, I tell you what, I never dropped the ball. From there you go. There you go. When you and um, you, you and Kempi um, taught me a lesson on that yep. day, I, that was a good thing for me because I learned that this was the environment that I needed to, you know, rise up to the occasion. Uh, because I, you know, being a young guy and so you, talented too, you, you don't you don't know you don't know the standard by which you have to train it. Let's talk about your debut match yep. uh, against the reigning premiers. Uh, I think it was round twenty-five. Uh, formidable task. Yep. Uh, and you know, as, as a young boy coming into grade, uh, what a way to start! Yeah, uh, it was a blur at the time. Um, I can I can remember the intensity of the game. Um, this is a grand final rematch. Yeah, so I was just there just to fill in wherever I could, and I had been training there the whole year like that. Daniel Anderson had put me fullback, wing, centre, five eight, whatever it was, and so um, it, it wasn't very difficult to know my job when I came on. I think Brad Fittler caught me in the corner of his eye. <laughs> I can remember, like, I was like, oh man, you know, Freddie Fittler's here. You there know? he is. I'm like, wow. So I'm in the defensive line and then Freddie Fittler's on the other side of the field. Yeah. So I'm on the left side, I think it is. And then he just takes a little glance over at me and he, he knew I'm a young guy and a new guy. <laughs> and Ryan Cross is opposite me and he just flings this ball straight to Ryan Cross. That moment then I knew. Uh, this is the NRL. Well, what was your favourite position? I mean, favourite position versus probably your best position, you think? Or were they the same? If, well, if I had it all over again, I'd have a probably, you know, improve my kicking game for 5 8. Yeah, I played six throughout my whole, uh, um, you know, grassroots football, um, schoolboy years. Uh, and Daniel Anderson had put a lot of emphasis during his time. Uh, he put a lot of time in the how to play six. Mm. The only thing I think was my kicking game wasn't up yeah. to NRL standard. And I think uh, that was the running game and the passing game wasn't, you know, wasn't too much of an issue. What helped me was the players that I played with. You know, that helps, that, that alleviates a lot of pressure. Um, yeah. it, it, you're without that then, it, it's difficult. You know, that's the most pressured position, I think, out of fullback yeah. and, um, and centre. Uh, if I could, I would never play fullback again. <laughs> it is hard. Yeah. It, it, is, it is absolutely difficult. Um, I respect every fullback that the running that you have to do, yeah. as well as reading kickers, which is very difficult. You know, I remember playing, I think it was uh, the Knights game. We played Andrew Johns, yeah. and boy, that was a tough <laughs> day. Uh, man, I just couldn't. I couldn't stop running. He just had me chasing every single yeah. time with his kicks. Yeah, I've said you do it all. Uh, defensively, the shots you were put on, um, the mindset, did you have to work on it? Well, a little bit, but a little bit have to do with, um, you know, just how you grew up in the grassroots um, mm. in Auckland, playing in Auckland. I mean, hits were a highlight. Um, you know, I came through with um, Steve Matai and yeah, Tommy yeah. Hulawai back in high school, and you know, when you're playing for Marist and you're up against Richmond or Oda who, yeah. yeah, you know, hits are a big part of the game. Um, so when it translated into NRL, it's, you know, it's kind of, it had always been a big part of our game anyway. Uh, have you ever come across Joel Clinton? <laughs> um, he probably, yep, thanks to Stace. <laughs> he'll probably go running in high. Talk to me about that moment, because that was an iconic moment too. And, and you mentioned Stace, talk to me. Yeah, so Stace was halfback. Uh, he was a half in, in, inside me and, and as a centre you know you've got to protect your half because they're the brains of the team and so Stace just rushed off the line we had drop kicked it or something like that 
And then Joel Clinton had it from one side of the field and he just made a beeline to Stace. Yeah. And initially I just thought, well, I can't do that. He's my halfback. I've got to get up <laughs> yeah. there. The thing was, I thought somebody else was coming up with me. <laughs> and I was there by myself. And so I just closed my eyes and just... Jay, Jay, Lord, Lord Jay, they didn't need anyone else. You absolutely <laughs> killed them by yourself. Um, yeah, I killed myself too. Eh? I, I, uh, I fractured my scap. Um, <laughs> so did you go off or did you play on? No, so um, it had... Uh, apparently it had weakened my scap. So the next yeah. game I played... I tried yeah. to put a shot on again and it, I fractured it. <laughs> you mentioned Daniel's name a number of times, uh, but you had a probably a handful of coaches. What role did they play in, in your career, which was a great one? Yeah, I think Ivan Cleary, uh, he's probably the most influential in my career. He had a good coaching staff. Mm. He had uh, John Ecklin, uh, Tony Edel. Um, he also had Craig Walker as our trainer. I think the combination of them four in terms of footy-wise um, they were able to not only get us physically right, um, but uh, get the best out of our game. You know, Ivan Cleary was good for the fact that he understood us as Kiwi boys. We're runners, you know, we love running the ball. Sometimes when you're supposed to kick it, we run it. Um, sometimes when you're not supposed to pass it, we pass it. Um, and he understood that being from this part of town anyway, that we thrive off each other we, we thrive off playing with each other so we will recognize the skill set of one another we could read that and then we just use our skill set in conjunction with somebody else so Ivan was very good at teaching us how to fit that into the into the NRL competition uh, it took a it took a while we managed to do it for quite a period of time when you get to the NRL it can be a little bit technical and overwhelming um, but John Ecklin just simplified it. For example, you, you'll be thinking about certain plays about, you know, a drop play with a block play or whatever it is. He would just say, well, a block play, you just go out the back 90% of the time. Mm. And then every other option would open itself. Yeah. Or he would say, instead of passing here, run it. You know, best, the best coaches do that. They make the game, which is very complicated, very simple. I think uh, that period between 2006 and 2011, I think that that was maybe the second best period of Warriors history, um, second to the 2000 to 2002 period, yeah. 2003. You have favourite years. What do you think were your favourite years? If you can single out one or two, and why? Yeah, 2008 was probably uh, the year that um, I could say it was most consistent in terms of football. I played uh, week in, week out. Uh, we made the semi-finals with the Warriors in. It's the first time I made a semi-final. Uh, I didn't play the 2011 grand final. I injured my knee then. Uh, so that was the highest in terms of NRL level that I played. And obviously World Cup year, um, mm. you know, that we won the World Cup that year. So, um, you know, in terms of the full experience of playing at the highest level under the most pressure, over a long period of time, um, we had a good leadership team. And, and, and the team only goes as far as their leaders. And um, they kept us, um, you know, focused on the goal. Um, you know, training was tough and it maintained its toughness throughout the semi-final period. We had to battle for everything. You mentioned semis, okay. There's one semi, uh, in particular, one plays eight that we see time and time again, one try that gets shown. Um, but people see the end uh, product, which is Michael Whitt putting the ball up before he puts the ball down. But what they don't often see is what you did uh, in that play to go through two great players, Israel Folau on the outside of him, and then also Steve Turner. Uh, do you remember that that play? Yeah, actually I do. Um, and, you know, I, uh, you know, a lot of people do talk about it. Um, when, you, when you're in the changing sheds and you look around you and you've got yeah. the players that you have and you've made it up to that far under a lot of pressure, um, we were just confident. And that last play there, even though there was two minutes to go, it just didn't feel like it. Mm. You know, we, we knew we were down. Uh, we knew that we had a shot and that's all we needed. You know, Aidan Kirk had just caught the ball uh, dead in goal to give us, yeah. to give us uh, a full set and so I think it was on the second play, um, me and Woody usually just look at each other. If nothing's on, we just go, bro, just give early, early ball and let's just see what happens. 
I think I made um, John Eklund happy. <laughs> Good, day. he deserves to be happy. What yeah, happened? well, he's always told me that whole year. He's always said, half a step in, step out. You know, yeah. he's always, that's his way of saying, mate, just half a step in, get on the outside of your centre yeah. and just do that over and over again. And I used to, you know, I used to joke around with him. I said, yeah, yeah, whatever, old man. <laughs> um, and I would do it. Every yeah, time he yeah. tells me to do something, I did it because I, he's a wonderful coach. Yeah. Um, but did you expect him to do that? And did no, you I hear didn't. anyone else on the crowd maybe yelling out? Felt like I could hear it from uh, back here across the ditch. Yeah, I, only when I saw the video yeah, and only when I heard the stories. Um, but no, I was pretty confident that he would put it down. Um, you know, we weren't supposed to beat Melbourne. We beat Melbourne, which is we, we were kind of ecstatic about. But when we went home, it's memorable because of uh, the reaction from the city and from our, our supporters. But it just seemed that uh, at that time, it was just, um, you know, everybody was talking about it. But the one that hurt the most is the one that sticks in my mind. <laughs> that was manly. Where that game takes you to a place where it's just um, the adversity is real high, you know. And you're trying to find a way to... It was Overcome a manly it. team, though. They were pretty good manly team. Yeah. But, you know, when you, when you finish the game and you look back at it, you're like, man, that's a challenge that you'd like all over again. You know, you'd like to be able to think a little bit clearer, yeah. make your tackles a little bit better under that much pressure. Um, never happened again, but, you know, oh. at the same time, it was almost like, yeah, you know. We'll beat him by a better, better team. There would have been some rivalry in that time, man. You know, for me, back in the early 2000s, was the Broncos. Just to love those, yep. the, the, those games and just competing easy because they were the best of the best. Yep. Storm. Yeah. Storm by far was the, was the team. But for some reason, we had a period there where we just would beat them when we, we shouldn't. Mm. I don't know what you put that down to. I, 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 we didn't change anything. We didn't really um, focus on them as much. Um, it just seems like at those given occasions, um, our game, the way that we played, the style that we played, troubled them. Mm. Um, so and that, that's enjoyable. Manu, he changed the game, he absolutely did. Uh, the new prototype, the big winger, the relationship you had with him, and then also I remember talking to you a few years ago and you understanding if you did A and B, means C often results in Manu scoring a try. You know, Manu, you know, makes up for a lot of deficiencies as a centre. And, and I'm not saying that just to be, you know, just to kind of take the attention away. I'm just saying that um, when you look at the comp like uh, Israel Folau or you look at uh, Justin Hodges, they're, mm. they're wonderful centres, Clinton Torpy, Fro Clinton Torpy, they're wonderful centres with, with great ability to do a lot of things. It, we call it a triple threat, which is yeah. you have a step, you have a fend and you have speed. So you can get on the outside, you can step back inside, or you can fend them. That is the ultimate, you know, three-way uh, threat that you can have as a centre. Yeah. I didn't have that. I, Are you look, sure? Look, I, look I, 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 could, I could have pace. I, I had pace. Um, I had footwork. I just didn't have a fend once. And so one of the ways that I, that I knew that I could um, get around that is money is that I had to use my skill to manipulate the centre and the winger and use him. Mm -hmm. If I could do that, then I could get the winger to, to worry about Manu, then I can have a one-on-one -on -one with the centre. That's basically yeah. how it is. And I think my time playing 5-8 and fullback just allowed me to have the skill just to use it in the, such a small space. Mm -hmm. But Manu's ability to score and mm -hmm. from anywhere, and this was when you know the corner post is an outline yes. you can't you can't dive on the outside you got to score inside without touching that post i mean that guy could do stuff down the sideline that no other big man could do the roosters uh your voice seems to play well against the roosters there's one occasion when you scored four tries talk to me about that oh. moment because it was a special moment there's a, a few guys uh retiring but just what you remember yeah, that, so that game basically was, uh, I think it was Alan Gunnbill and uh, Brent Webb's last home game. Mm. Um, so the occasion was already set, you know, that day. Um, we were on a bit of a, a roll. We were, quite, we were in form as a team. I just, to be honest, I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. <laughs> Paddy Arvan always tells me, if it wasn't for my pass, 
you wouldn't have got four tries. So he always tells me that. <laughs> but yeah, I, it, it's hard. You, you know, you know, as an as an athlete, you don't really. Um, you know, when you score four tries or you make 40 tackles, and then it's kind of the same thing, you know. You, no, it's not. You're, you're just... <laughs> no, 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 it's not. I've tackled 40 um, times yeah. in a game. I've never scored four tries, unless under-16s. Uh, but, but not in um, <laughs> NRL. Obviously, we bond with a lot of our, our players that we play a long time, but there's some that are most memorable, for whatever reason. Hame <laughs> Lawaki. Yeah. I don't bond with him, but... <laughs> <laughs> but he is one of the funniest guys. Um, you know, in the team. Um, you know, he's just fresh, eh? Yeah. And uh, there's some team things that happen when you travel. So, Hame, we were waiting in the in the terminal and Hame, just being a clown, you know, decides to down trial people. You know, yeah. and, 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 and there was a packed crowd and somehow he, he went to go do it to uh, Brent Tate. Yeah. Um, the thing was, Brent Tate was... Um, you know, didn't have a certain kind of layer on. Oh, wow, he's free-balling. <laughs> <laughs> and Ahmed just froze there like that with his face like that, and everybody just cracked up. And Tate just shook his head. Hey. He goes, blimmin, Ahmed. Jay, 12 seasons in an NRL, 145 games. Now, I know you would have wanted to play more, but, you know, the, the body wasn't always um, up to it. Um, how was the frustration in the last sort of uh, three, three or so years? Uh, yeah, look, well, the frustration was, it is what it is. Um, although I wanted to play, um, I look back at it and I realise it taught me a lot. Mm. Um, it kind of grew me as a, as a person, as a man, because you, you realise that there are things which are more important than football. You know, I, I think uh, the Lord did it for a purpose. Um, and I don't, I don't mind too much. Although it was frustrating the last few years, I realised that um it was time yeah and i that's a good thing about it you know the, the injuries kind of told me well, it was time to move on and uh i don't regret it tell, tell me jay are you not lost to the game of rugby league no uh, i i uh help out the bear Oscar vikings i i'm assistant coach to uh john o'paul who helps out that club we've been there for 20 years really mm. um and we've we've seen these young guys grow up and these a lot of these guys haven't had like other teams that haven't had professional yeah. coaching. They haven't been in rep teams or professional coaching. Uh, so we're teaching them a lot about the game, but it's more than the game, it's, it's about life. You know, we know these players and their, their families and their kids, we grow up with them. You know, we have, a, um, we have a scriptural or a biblical way of helping them out. You yeah. know, we, 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 teach, we teach the word we're in regard to that and uh, we try and make it normal. The, the good thing about that is we actually extend that out to the community. You know, rugby league is, is somewhat struggling yeah. in Auckland, but we, we know that we could at least um, offer the ability to welcome anybody to play the game or even just train with us. Jay, once a warrior, always a warrior. You were one of the absolute best to put on the jump of men. I thank you for your service. Cheers, my Thank you for having me. I'm on to beat them. Uh, no doubt you will join us again next week for more insight and stories right here on Once a Warrior. Road party goes straight through and will get there. Road party with a great run, an incisive run. Gets away from Johns. Johns, that's right. Road party with a solo effort. Rapati! Rapati has scored for the Auckland Warriors!